change. And that award is chosen by the family, so I'll just ask Trish yeah. and Elena. Elena to come and, as you see, I'm very good with names. Omar. Um, hi, uh, my name is Trisha Fink. I'm Miguel's uh, wife. I don't like that other word. He still is with us at some level here. This is our daughter, Elena. Hi, you guys. Thanks for um, coming. And so I, I'm always uh, given the opportunity to see five films. And I must say this year, the last one I saw was this one here, and the title of which is Don't Give Up Your Voice. And every single film, the women, and most of them were the women, the women, the GE plant, the um, women in New York, the women um, in Glasgow who won after 12 years, and the woman in Lesotho. I, it's like, whoa, talk about women and their their voice. And I just thought that was just wonderful. But all that, all those being said, I did choose this, this last one here, Don't Give Up Your Voice. It just covered so... Um, <laughs> Miguel just came all the way through that with the, you know, he came as a refugee from uh, Guatemala. He was involved. He, he was a labor leader there. He got out when 27 of his friends didn't the following year. They disappeared. He came here and was very grateful to be uh, accepted as a refugee. Um, and he never stopped. He just never stopped uh, advocating uh, for the rights of workers and for just justice and digni uh, dignity and respect for workers. So all throughout that film, it's just so wonderful. You used to see all ages, all, I mean, obviously various identities, genders, whatever we want to call them now, um, and celebrating life together. It was, I just fi found it um, exhilarating, and it's something that we should be putting on the CBC and, and all the way through because talk about a mass movement and a, a collective, the collective being the key word here, uh, a movement of peoples uh, that get, get it done and allow life and dignity to continue, uh, life with dignity to continue for these people. It is so exhilarating. So I, I'm really happy to recommend that film this year. It recognizes a filmmaker <coughs> pardon me, from an equity-seeking group to help support these important voices in film. Women, non-binary, LGBTQ+, people, uh, persons of color or aboriginal filmmakers are eligible for this award. And the winner is, can I have a drum roll? <laughs> All right, we have a drum roll. <laughs> Town of Widows. <laughs> we won't be giving you the cash right now, but uh, you will be getting it very, very soon. And maybe I'll ask you for a comment or so after we announce the, uh, the next. So the next one is, oh, by the way, that was chosen by the Board of Directors. The Best in Festival was also chosen by the, by the Board of Directors. Uh, we found it was a little bit, uh, the logistics of having a national kind of a vote was just, it, it just wasn't working. People were voting really late by the time we wanted to announce it. So we decided we would take the issue in hand. And the Best in Festival as voted by the uh, Cliff Board of Directors for 2019 I'm sure you'll be all very surprised. Town of Widows. Can you give me one moment? I'm just going to read out the final award, which is the best Canadian film. Which you just chose. Which you just chose, and which I don't know the result of. Town of Widows. <laughs>
And I think what all these films show is that uh, worker struggles are universal and that everyone has different norms, but that uh, these communities and these people and these workers took up this fight, um, whatever their fight might be, uh, to change their norms. And um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm so inspired by, it. it's mostly women who led these fights uh, at this film festival. And um, it's, it's been an honor and a privilege to be able to share uh, these stories. And for the workers, as much as their fight is about compensation, it's really about the principle. Um, because at the end of the day, no one should, uh, everyone should come home safely and no one should be injured or killed or poisoned on the job. And um, I think all these amazing films um, show that. And we're just so grateful to be able to share the, the story of, of Peterborough. Uh, which I think is similar to so many other uh, towns of widows and workers. Uh, so thank you. <laughs> wanted to give them a little bit of recognition and Michelle noticed last night that the two people in question liked a particular item that Derek had donated to the film festival so she pulled them out and we wrote a little card for them so I'd just like to recognize the work of Erica Yoshida and Jin Chui for helping out as volunteers just never get recognized, so we just wanted to make sure that they were recognized. And speaking of recognition, this festival would mean nothing, absolutely nothing, without the people who make the films, and unfortunately the people who suffer and become the subject of these films. But let's also remember that there are people who take on the struggle and who win their struggles, and who inspire others to enter into the struggle. And that's what inspires us. That's why we continue to show these films made by these amazing people about amazing people. That's what it's all about. The final thanks, of course, goes to our audiences. All of you who come here, you take your time out of a weekend to come here and share and join and discuss and hopefully even take the struggle further. So thank you all.